if the Senate is has majority Republicans and Biden is the president, we will probably not see any substantial tax change for a couple of years. So the question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets the top agents in our industry hoard themselves, grow and prosper in today's real estate market? That's the question. And this podcast will give you the answer. Hi, I'm Aaron Muchastegui, and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Hi, Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron Muchastegui, and I am so excited to share with you our newest head podcast sponsor. You know, and this is a company called Rent Ready. Rent Ready is a landlord tenant software that has everything you need to manage your rentals from your phone or your computer. No need to be tech savvy, download multiple programs or hire a specialist. Rent Ready is easy to use for everyone. And if you do have a question, their customer support team is available to make sure managing your properties doesn't have to be harder than it already is. Rent Ready has a feature for every step of the landlord process. You can list your vacancy for free to realtor.com and doorsteps, find quality tenants with a full tenant screening process, Send and e-sign leases right from the app and track maintenance requests. Yes, there really is one app for all of that. Best of all, not only is Rent Ready easy to use with awesome customer service, but it's affordable as well. Get a subscription of Rent Ready for as little as $1 a year when you sign up for their annual plan using code ROCKSTAR. Right? That, now that's crazy. A dollar a year. Why wouldn't you go sign up just to see, even if you've got one tenant or want to try it with one of them? So that's right, you get a whole year of Rent Ready for just $1 when you sign up at rentready.com. It's spelled R-E-N-T-R-E-D-I.com using code ROCKSTAR. Real Estate Rockstars, this is Aaron Muchastegui, and I am back for a state of the market. And I'm thinking, you know, these, this state of the market is the podcast where I come on, and sometimes it's me, and sometimes I'm on here with, with some friends or some other real estate experts, and we're talking about the real estate news and what's going to be happening in the world. And it's funny because if we think back to like January, a lot of our news was like, hey, these, this company is, is selling more stock or, you know, ring doorbells are in trouble for, you know, videos. There's all, you know, we had a lot of real estate news, but man, it seems like the news of today just seems more important. Everything that's happening right now, I mean, it's just been a wild year with real estate news, but it is funny. Even back in February, I remember Pat Hyben and I on here doing a state of the market podcast. And one of the articles we were talking about was an intimate article that said, could coronavirus kill the real estate market? And the funny part of that was now we all know that, wow, we got that wrong. The real estate market, I guess it depends on what does kill the real estate market. So it killed volume, right? There's way less sellers out there and there's a way higher demand. And so prices are going up. And so you'll ask a lot of people and they'll say, hey, did it kill the real estate market? And, and you know, we have a ton of listeners that have had the best years they've ever had. But then you'll have other people that'll say last year they did you know, 60 transactions and this year they've done eight or five. And so maybe coronavirus did kill the real estate market or maybe it, maybe it really made it boom. It is the story of multiple, multiple recovery types. And today, as I record this, it is November 11th. You know, we had a presidential election last week and that was, I was expecting this week to, um, well, to talk about it, right? It is just, it's just a weird election. Like we do know it's a weird election. It was much closer, regardless of who ends up winning at this point. It is not what they said was going to happen. It was not what the forecaster said was going to happen out there. Um, if Biden ends up winning, and right now it looks like Biden is going to win, it was a lot closer election than anybody said it was supposed to be, down to 7,000 or 10,000 votes in some of those states that really matter. And then it was also really super weird. First time ever going to bed thinking one person is going to get elected and wake up that, that, that somebody else is. And then having all of the vote counts stop in the middle of the night, it was very anticlimactic. And everybody's usually staying up until midnight on election night. And all of a sudden around like eight or nine o'clock, everything stopped. Nothing was happening anymore. Funky, funky year. But as I jump into today's real estate news of what's going on out there, I mean, that's some, one of the things I wanted to start talking about. You know, there was, you've seen a lot of articles now. Joe Biden, if he is the president, what's that mean? What's that going to mean for real estate? What's that going to mean for taxes? What's that going to mean uh, for investing? What's that going to mean for agents? And so that is some of the stuff that we're going to dig into right now. Rockstar Nation, this is Aaron Amuchastegui. Hey, I hate to interrupt the current podcast that you're listening to, but I am so excited to share this with you. 
I just finished interviewing the original host of this podcast, my good friend, Pat Hyman. You know, I got to talk to Pat about how he started his real estate career and a whole bunch of tips and tactics that he used to be successful. So if you haven't listened to it yet, go check out State of the Market number 49. On there, I get to talk to Pat about all those different things. You know, and in there too, he talked a lot about his six steps for seven figures book and training program that he built over the last couple of years. And I realized I haven't done a good enough job of reminding all of you lately about all of the resources that we've built for you out there. So if you wanna check out Pat's course, we've got like a three minute summary video when you go to, it includes so many easy to follow tips that you can follow on it like a day to day basis. You get email reminders, all sorts of different things that come with that course. You find that you go to rebusuniversity.com, R-E-B-U-S, rebusuniversity.com. Look at courses, you can find the six steps for seven figures book. And really there's a whole bunch of other courses in there too. Our normal prices used to be 1500 or $2,000 a course. These are real deal professional courses. But now uh, during quarantine, a lot of them are priced down to like 90 bucks, 95 bucks. So we've slashed the prices because we know right now is a time for everybody to be focusing on growth and education, especially while they're feeling like they don't have as much to do. And if you go in there and you figure like, like there's a lot of different courses you want, Maybe you don't want to buy the a la carte. You can go to futureofrealestatetraining.com and you can get access to all of our different courses for 97 bucks a month. I think there's a discount on there if you go a year or there's even like a lifetime option that you can pay. You get access to every course we ever put on Rebus University for as long as we have it. So go check out those options, Rebus University or futureofrealestatetraining.com. All right, back to your podcast. Sorry for the interruption. So, so one of the very first articles I wanted to talk about today was the, was it's a, it's a CNN article. And it just says, will, you know, your, are your taxes going to go up? What's really going to happen? And something that's really been a lot of the news today, because people have said, all right, so now Joe Biden is elected and, and the house is still democratic. And there are all these things that could happen. And there's an Inman article I'm going to go into next of all the possible things that could happen this year. Um, but one of the biggest things that the, that I think is really interesting and somewhat undecided right now of how that will impact is the reality that Joe Biden is the new president elect. And this, as far as the media is announcing, Joe Biden is the new president elect that Congress has, uh, still has, uh, goes to the Democrats and the Republicans run the Senate. Well, traditionally, if the Republicans are, have more of the Senate and the president is democratic, there isn't much tax change that's happening. And so there are going to be some runoffs in January in, I think it's, it, I, I forget what state it's in, where they're going to be going into some runoffs where they could actually make some Senate changes. But I think the biggest news that I read today, that it's on you know CNN and Fox News and any of the places that you look at, is if the Senate is has majority Republicans and Biden is the president, we will probably not see any substantial tax change for a couple of years. And I, I think that is one of the reasons that the stock market went up a few days ago as things were starting to go in. It was kind of the realization that when it comes to taxes, the over the next few years, we'll probably see more of the same. And one of the other news pieces we saw this week was the big announcement that, hey, there's a vaccine that is almost ready. And the, the stock market really, really liked that. We saw airline stocks jump way up. And I tell you what, from a personal level, not a news, news level, from a personal level, I really hope the world gets to open up again. I really hope we get to travel again. I really hope that we get to go places. And the and from the looks of that was there's a lot of people are starting to have hope too that maybe we would. I mean, Hawaiian Airlines going up, their, their stock went up 50, 50% in a day uh, with that news. So the I am happy to, I'm happy with that and happy that we're going to see some more of that. So next one I want to get into, this article says, what a Joe Biden presidency means for real estate and housing. So this was an Inman article and it was published just a couple of days ago. And it said the after days of a suspenseful voting, Joe Biden has been declared the 46th president of the United States. The Biden and his vice president pick Kamala Harris have a lot on their plate, to say the least. But here's some of the things they're going to be doing. And it highlights several things. It highlights they make changes in affordable housing and housing discrimination laws in rentals and evictions and housing related taxes, homelessness, 1031 exchanges. It's a few big things on there that I think the regardless of if the Republicans have a majority in the Senate, these are things that I think the president does have the power to do. So says the, the Biden campaign's housing proposal pinpointed the dearth of housing supply as a driving force behind the affordability crisis. In response, Biden has pledged to invest $640 billion in housing over the next 10 years. Among other things, that plan would be to provide financial assistance to help hardworking Americans to buy or rent safe, quality housing. So as you look into that as an agent, 
Well, that could give you hope for the entry level buyer. So if they are going to put money into first time buyer programs again, and to help people buying housing, put, you know, infusing money into people so they can get started to be able to buy uh, a house without having that savings, that's, that could make a big difference. I don't remember what year it was, but several years ago, they did a, a tax credit where they moved it up where you could buy a house. And I think it was back in like maybe 2011, 2012, where they had a tax credit that you could get and you could use that for your down payment preemptively. If usually you were going to get a tax credit, you would get that tax credit, but they would give it to you ahead of time. Uh, so that way you could use that for your down payment. And I've heard a lot of things that they're going to be thinking about doing some things like that to, you know, to help people to buy houses. So we will see where that is for the opportunity. But, the, but just know they're going to be spending a lot of money on affordable housing. And as an agent, you could try to figure out where you might fit in with that. Housing discrimination laws. It says Biden's housing proposal tackles redlining and other discriminatory practices in the housing industry head on. He specifically wants to create a homeowner and renter bill of rights. Similar to the California law bill of rights, the bill of rights would prevent landlords from discriminating against tenants who receive federal housing assistance, among other things. So the that 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 could be an interesting change too. That you know, California has had those laws for a long time. Now, the I think every place out there has anti-discrimination laws when it comes to housing and renting and and and, and things like that. But a national a national established homeowner and renter bill of rights is not something that's been on the table yet. So as uh, you know, and as you hear that, what's that that's going to say is that's going to protect occupants of houses. So that's going to protect somebody that owns their house and lives in it. Right. So there could be things that maybe it's going to be harder for them to be foreclosed on or harder for them to get unfair lending practice. Those are some of the things they'll be diving into with that. You know, when it comes to, you know, the let's see, the other part, the protection for the renters is going to be, you know, options to be able to you know pay rent late, options to be able to not have eviction, option to be able to work out some other programs. And that's another thing that they were talking about next. The next thing on the plan says rentals and evictions. Biden's plan for rentals and rental and renters calls for local eviction diversion programs will include mediation, payment plans, and financial literacy education. So the in an earlier version of this plan to beat COVID, Biden also stated that no one should face foreclosure or eviction because they're affected by COVID-19, calling for mortgage and rental relief programs for people with that. So that could be something that's something that's happening right now. So right now there are no evictions allowed and no foreclosures allowed. There are there, there are some exclusions to that, but in general, there are you know, foreclosures are on hold until January 4th. Evictions are on hold until January 4th for normal homeowners and normal tenants, the you know, not investment loans, not special type properties. And so the, they're talking about extending that for a whole nother year. Next, it says Biden said if elected, he will roll back Trump's tax cuts, presumably including deduction for rules like things like mortgage interest and local and state taxes. Now, that's one thing that I think could have a major, major impact. It's a big thing that when we're telling people to buy their houses, like, hey, you're going to be able to deduct that property tax or that mortgage interest. And so if you rent a house for $1,000, you could actually pay a mortgage of $1,300 a month, and it's going to be the same thing for you after taxes. Now, I'm not sure how far that will go with the Republican Senate, but that is one of the plans that are out there. Homelessness, another entire section of Biden's housing proposal is dedicated to homelessness, a national strategy for making housing a right for all. The proposal calls for emergency funding for things like shelters and vouchers. You know, and there's another article that I'm going to talk about that's pretty interesting. It talks about a way that maybe they're going to try to tackle homelessness and affordable housing. Another thing that they talked a lot about was they wanted to get rid of the 1031 like kind exchange for investors with annual incomes above $400,000. So what a 1031 exchange is, is if somebody is selling a house, and they're making a profit when they sell that house. If they are going to buy another or another property, and they can ten thirty one exchange. So if they sell a house for three hundred thousand and they buy another property for three hundred thousand, they don't have to pay taxes on that increase. And so that was a very common way that people could get a lot of real estate. That now they're talking about eliminating that. And that, and I am unclear right now if that's something they can do you know, without the house and without the Senate, or if it's something that that will happen no matter what. All right. Next article, we jump into Bloomberg article it says record low mortgage rates widen historic U.S. economic divide. So the this one just came out, said minority homeowners are losing ground in the K-shaped recovery. Times are good for most U.S. homeowners right now as record low interest rates spur a surge in refinancing and rising home prices. They're not so great for Donald Williams clients, most of whom are African-American and don't have the financial resources to compete with well-heeled New York City buyers. So the they're losing ground. This is in another scene from the K-shaped economic recovery across America, cheap credit for those who qualify is widening wealth inequality. So we talked about this K-shaped recovery a couple months ago on here. And what that is, it's saying there's two different rec recoveries going on. In the financial sector right now, unemployment is maybe at like 
five to 7% when we, when we came out with that article, which really means there is no unemployment. That's normal employment. But in the housing or in, in the services industry, like hotels and things like that, unemployment was at 30 or 40%. So it's saying in, in some industries, people are really struggling. They're not going back to work. In other industries, nothing has changed. They're making just as much money, if not more than they ever had before, and they have more savings. Those are the people that are reaping the benefits from the new interest rates. People that have those good, solid jobs are getting you know, new lower payments you know, for their houses. They can buy bigger houses, everything like that. People that are unemployed right now, they're not able to refi. They're not going to be able to refi into those new rates. So the, that, that article is saying the income you know, inequality is getting worse because the people that are doing well right now are going to be doing even better with these low interest rates. And the people that are struggling aren't going to be eligible to get them. Hey, Real Estate Rockstars listeners, I'm sorry to interrupt again, but I want to do a quick commercial break. But this commercial break is different. This is stuff that I think you need. And this is me talking to you about some of the stuff that we had. So, you know, recently we had a lot of people reach out to us and say, hey, why don't you do a real estate mastermind? Why don't you do something where a lot of the listeners can get together and do some Zoom calls and ask each other questions and really just try to brainstorm and work together? I mean, there's a million masterminds out there. I don't know if this is something that we really want to do or not, or if we do, if we're going to limit it to maybe 20 or 30 people. We're just trying to figure out if any of you guys are interested. So if you have any interest at all in joining a mastermind with real estate agents around the country that are part of the Real Estate Rockstars Network, go to hybendigital.com forward slash mastermind and just join the wait list. It's just a really a formal, it's just an interest list for us to see, is this something we want to be doing? So that's, that's number one. Number two, you go to hybendigital.com forward slash foreclosures. We have a two day mark thing that we just finished recording. Now it's also inside Rebus University. And so you can go to Rebus University and look at it. If you're already a member of Rebus, I mean, a lot of you guys are in the, you know, the monthly fee where you get access to everything. So we have a new course in there, 17 hours of content on how to buy foreclosures, on how to find deals, on how to, you know, do title, you know, go to auction. Also turn that into clients for your real estate agents, how you can turn somebody that's in default behind on their mortgages into a client. So go, you know, check out that course, especially for, you know, you can, you can buy the course now, but again, most of you guys already subscribed to all that. I just wanted you to know there's another 17 hours of content. Great, great content that I just recorded on there. Uh, that all of you guys have access to now at Rebus University. And then finally, the we have software that we talk about on and off. It's called Padhawk. And in Padhawk, you can use that to go find leads. What, uh, you know, so everyone is really, really busy right now. And we're so, so busy, people are selling and they're saying there isn't enough product on the market, right? So they're, they're, they can't find houses. Well, Padhawk will help you find houses before they're listed. It helps you find owners that should be listing their properties or people that might want to get there. I recorded a quick video. It's like six or seven minutes long for you guys to look at real estate agent specific on what how you can use the software in order to do it. So let's go to hybendigital.com forward slash leads. Again, there's a video in there. I talk about how you can use the software to do it. Check it out. If it's something that you like, you may want to sign up for it. 99 bucks a month, but it's nationwide, any city out there. And it is a great way to find houses. So right now people are saying there's lots of buyers but we can't find enough houses. Well, maybe you can use this software. You'll find something that hasn't listed yet and make them an offer on their house. All right, back to your regularly scheduled program. Thank you for letting me interrupt you with that break. The quick article I just wanted to touch on that I thought was kind of interesting as a sign of the time. So Blackstone back firm targets Brazil mom and pop investors. So this is an article from Bloomberg from November 11. It says Blackstone backed Patriot Investments, one of, the lar- one of the largest alternative asset management firms focused on Latin America is hunting for mom and pop investors in Brazil for the first time since its founding. And so they are you know, investing in, in, you know, there's real estate funds in Brazil right now. So, so REITs were very, are still very popular investment vehicles in the U.S. And the, as they talk about trying to find new investors into these funds, they're doing real estate funds now in other countries and looking to go fund those locally as people are trying to find, you know, a real, real estate based investments out there. So the it, it, you know, as we see people going into other countries and that the real estate is a worldwide phenomenon. And so it's fun to just get a look, a look, look a little bit at that. The next article is another one of those that is a pretty fun one. And this was a Bloomberg article it says the global rich trigger 1900% sales surge for UK country estates. And so this is a lot of the things that we've seen in, in the US right now. And we've seen higher demand for properties on acreage for large properties because people are going to spend more time in their houses. And so this is a funny one. It says last month, Savills listed a Bowden Park estate for, for 35 million pounds, $46.4 million. The property included 15,900 square feet, 18th century mansion, I mean, 22 acres. And 
22 gardens, sorry, on 1,400 acres of farmland in Wilshire, which is about a two-hour drive from central London. In any other year, this property would just sit on the market. But this year, it's different. It says we, we, we would not have been able to tell the owner before we could sell this in three months. Last year for entrance, only one property sold for more than 15 million. But now since COVID in 2020, they've had over 19 of those houses sell or be, be pending. So it's really interesting to see a super high demand for these giant properties. And if you go look at the article on, on Bloomberg, you're going to see these giant mansions now that they are very specialized properties. And like I said, it used to be one would sell a year. It would take years to sell it. And this year, as they're coming on the market, it's actually a seller's market. I'm looking at giant mansions in London. It's actually a seller's market. I'm actually going to share the screen on that really quick so we can see it for you guys that are watching on YouTube right now. Here's the article, Global Rich Trigger 1900% Sales Surge. Take a look at that picture. Look at that. So the those properties are now selling right away when they're going on the market, which is completely different than what they had seen years past. Next article says, imagining a second life for midtown Manhattan empty offices. As workers stay home and office buildings sit vacant, some see a new role for New York's business district as a site for affordable housing. Could you believe that? Can you think about that? So we're thinking, what is next for New York? What's next for all those places? Now, I've seen just as many people saying, people are going to come back to New York. They survived 9-11. The, you know, they recovered. Everything's going to recover. People are going to come back. People love living in the city. It's limited space. It's a totally different environment. But this article is saying, you know, this one came out right before the election. It's a dense grid of office towers normally pushing activity. has been called a ghost town now. Many times you'd expect to see tumbleweeds rolling through Bryant Park. The Occupancy rates on city hotels like those in, in Midtown South tied to tourism and corporate level plunged below 10%. Occupancy rates on hotels in downtown, in downtown Manhattan plunged below 10%. And more significantly, the workers who once crowded the sidewalks on their way to the office have stayed away. Commercial broker CBRE found that just 10% of Manhattan's workers have returned. And so there's a lot of articles of people out there now talking about, can they change this to affordable housing? Or could that be, you know, as Biden goes after affordable housing and he goes after homelessness, is he going to put some sort of incentive into that? Because you also have to pay the companies for that. You have to give them some sort of a reason or some sort of an incentive uh, to be able to switch over to that. So I have to imagine uh, that they would. All right. Next article on Inman says temporary rental provider tweener homes strikes a deal with Expedia. The Chandler, Arizona based real estate company offers fully furnished homes on short term leases for families in between permanent residences. The another alternative model for temporary housing and standalone residential is launched. Tweener Homes positions itself as a part-time housing solution for families in between homes, marketing lease options from one year, from, from one month to a year. In a press release, the company states it's a technology-based real estate company filling the gap for com- for people that need an in-between residence. Homes available to Tweener Homes clients are fully furnished, and the process is conducted online. Families need to rent a home or find some sort of temporary housing in common, especially in very tight sellers markets. So the this will be interesting for agents to, you know, I think all of you agents could actually use a service like this when you're out there. So the right now they're primarily around around Phoenix and the and we'll see if that model affects people in other places. But there's a lot of times right now when people, you know, sell their house, but they don't have a place to move into yet. So they do these temporary kind of lease backs where they get to go. But there's it's really common to have a two or three month period between selling a house and buying a house, very seldom do you actually get to buy a house on the same day you close and and coordinate those. So this is a company that's kind of focusing on that. They're saying, hey, we can give you a one month rental, we can give you a six month rental while you're buying your other house or or something like that. So the as they are filling that mark, I would, I would expect to see more companies like that coming out in a market like this where demand is high, you know, demand is high for real estate. So the properties are selling, but then, so people are selling their properties at top dollar. Sometimes people are saying, hey, I'll list it just to see if I get that great offer. Well, now they get that great offer, but they don't know where they're going to be moving to yet. So that's where companies like that will come into play. All right. Another one I, I talked about at the beginning of the year, we were talking about, you know, ring is some of the news that would come up. Today's news says fire risk prompts recall of hundreds of thousands of ring video doorbells. So the Amazon has recalled more than 350,000 of its second generation smart doorbells following uh, reports of certain ring products catching fire. The recall notes, which was posted by the Consumer Product Safety Commission states that battery can overheat when the incorrect screws are installed for installation, posing fire and burn. At a price of $100, hundreds of thousands of second-generation doorbells were sold on Amazon between June and October 2020. 23 reports of fires causing minor property damage and eight reports of minor burns were filed. So the That's a big recall. 
So the, it'll be interesting to see who that impacts and, and how that, I mean, it's obviously going to impact ring. I mean, personally, am I going to uninstall my ring to go send it back the, because I think there's a chance of that I don't know. I think most people will probably, I guess, if it's an optional recall, not everybody's going to go send everything back in. So to see what the actual impact could be might take some time to figure that out. Next, there's these two articles from Wall Street Journal that I, that I think you guys should, should get to hear about. So this first one says the race for space is pushing up suburban's rents. America's mega landlords have thrived since COVID-19, setting off a scramble for suburban homes. Now, most people that are landlords know that since COVID has hit, occupancy are at all-time highs because people that, are, that have houses are staying because they want to stay somewhere secure and they don't want to move if they don't have to. But people that are being forced to move because they need more room are. So the, you know, I've, everyone that I talked to, they're at 99% occupancy when they were at 90% occupancy going in pre-COVID. Collections are still at 97% where they have been, you know, for the most part, which is kind of a good opposite of what this next article I'm going to show you is. But for the people with mid-level housing, you know, A, B, C level housing, the we're seeing a, a very increased demand. A couple of things that they say in here is the, over the last in October, these big hedge funds like Imitation Homes and all the people that own a bunch of real estate, they, they're asking rents have jumped 7.5% in October year over year. They've had the fifth straight month of year over year increases. So that means every month, July to July, August to August, they're raising prices. And we're seeing that too with our rentals out in Texas. Right now, you know, as renewals are happening, rents are getting raised eight to 9% over the year prior. It says mom and pop operators and individual investors. They're also raising rents, just not quite as aggressively. The sing September single family home rents climbed an average of 3.8% from a year earlier across 63 markets. So the, it says many new tenants are arriving from expensive coastal cities. The number of Californians applying to lease from American homes for rent in Arizona, and Nevada, and Texas has twice what they were from a year prior. So that's something everybody's been hearing about. Also, as things change, we've had some different articles where there's these big companies that say, now you can go live wherever and work from home. Well, the, we know for a fact that the people that were living in downtown San Francisco are much happier moving out of San Francisco into other places that are a lot less expensive if they're going to be getting paid a similar amount. So that's one of the, the things that they're seeing happen out there. But the demand for space resulting in increased rent prices, as the Wall Street Journal article, came out on November 10th. Next one says a little bit of the opposite. But this was the one that really stuck out to me when we're talking about the opportunity of what's ahead, of what's ahead and some of the changes that should be out there of so many of the different things that we talked about today. But it says it's called the struggling rental market could usher in the next American housing prices crisis. Some 30 million to 40 million people from New York City to San Francisco face potential eviction once moratoriums expire. It says the tens of millions of people potentially caught in a web of home rental debt so that home rental debt right now is somebody that, that gave a CDC notice a few months ago and said, hey, I can't pay my rent right now and I'd be homeless. And so their foreclosure, their eviction was put on hold, but they still owe that. So if they were paying $1,000 a month, now come January, they're going to owe $4,000. So the tens of millions of people potentially caught in a web of home rental debt, that essentially that would be debt, would far exceed the 3.8 million homeowners who were foreclosed on in 2007 to 2010. That's a crazy thing right there when you're trying to see how many people are in default, tens of millions, maybe 30 to 40 million people are behind on their rents and potentially going to get evicted. When we had foreclosures, you know, the, the bulk of our foreclosures from 2007 to 2010, that was 3.8 million homeowners. So 10 times as many people are facing eviction from rental debt than we had foreclosed in the great crisis of 2007 to 2010. And 10, that is super significant when you try to see what's happening on out there. The economic research firm calculated 12.8 million Americans would then owe an average of $5,400 from missed payments. The That's really crazy. That, that was from a Moody's analytics part of it. So the outstanding rent debt could reach $7.2 billion before the close of 2020. So what does that really tell you? The If there are that many people getting evicted, either two things. One is it's going to, it's going to force government intervention, right? If they've got 10 times as many people about to get evicted than they had go through the foreclosure crisis in 2007 to 2010, then government intervention to try to slow that down, it will not be a surprise. If there, if there isn't any government intervention, or let's say there's government intervention that, that deals with half of that or 75% of that, you're still going to see a mass number of people being forced to leave their homes because of debt, debt that takes a long time to get back, the, it takes you know years to kind of recover. And in those times we saw, you know, storage unit stock go up, 
because people were downsizing, they're moving their stuff into storage units. We see housing demand go up for lower income housing or stuff outside the city. So a lot of the stuff we've been talking about over the last few months of where could that opportunity be? That opportunity could be in services. That opportunity could be in affordable housing. That opportunity could be in markets that are outside the city core where people will be downsizing to. And that opportunity could be figuring out how they do downsize, you know, helping people downsize and figure out how to function in that life. You know, again, a bunch of interesting articles today. And I am just so glad to be back and talking to you guys. You know, when I had my interview last week, I told every, I reminded everybody I've been gone for about a month. I was driving around the country in an RV trying to see what was going on everywhere. And it was amazing to see that some states were doing amazing and some states were struggling significantly. And from place to place, everybody had, like we've said, the K-shaped recovery. 2020 has been different for everyone. And some people would say it was, it was a great year. And some people say it was the worst year of their life. And it depended on the city and it depended on the state and depending on their job, depending on the things they like to do for fun, you know, and being able to go improvise and try to change that. So the, I am excited that 2020 is almost over. And man, I am really excited about the fact, I am hoping that by the time this year is over, politics and elections is something that is not all over the news anymore. And we're getting to focus back on how do we take our businesses, find new opportunities and continue to grow them. You know, I always appreciate all our listeners. If there was something on here that you guys listened to that you like today, I would beg you to just share it with a friend. You know, we have more people listening to this podcast than any other real estate agent podcast out there. You know, and it's, we're trying to deliver so much more stuff. If you've got somebody that you want me to interview, I want you to send me a message, go find me on Instagram and send me a message and say, Hey, you got to interview this one. That's at RE Rockstars or at Aaron Amuchastegui on Instagram. Say, Hey, you got to interview this guy. You got to get on there. If you have not checked out our new sponsor yet, Rent Ready, R-E-N-T-R-E-D-I. I don't know how long they're going to be giving this promotion, but I think it's like a dollar a year for this property management software. You collect payments, work orders, everything. If you use the code Rockstars, so the check out Rent Ready. You know, let me know who you want to have me interview next, and if there was something on here that you liked, please go share it. And I'm sorry if I was a little slow and a little rusty today as I was going through, but I can't wait to be recording these again for you every week. Thanks for listening. Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities, all that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.